We're going to be looking at one of the best, if not the best vibe coding tools I have ever seen. And what makes this tool so much better than the rest is the fact that it has built in agents that work together with their own dedicated tasks to make your app or game come to life. As always, I have a link in the description below, but today's tool is called mgx.dev. And you can see here, it has a standard screen and it looks really no different than any other tool, any other large language model that you would use. You can see along the top here, Mike is the team leader. We also have Alex, which is an engineer. We have Emma, a product manager. We have a data analyst, which is David, and we have Bob, the architect. So the team leader is going to talk to the other ones and make sure that they all work together. They even say that there is more roles that they will keep adding. And I love this idea and it works really well. There are some other features here. So we can connect Supabase, for example. So if we click this, you're going to see Supabase. We can hit new organization. It's going to ask to link it. So we're gonna say authorize MGX. And now MGX has access to Supabase, which is a backend. So when we go to Vibecode, now we can have things like a login system or data connections and all that kind of fun stuff. So Superbase is now connected. We can connect to the Franklin AI Superbase. In Superbase, we have this new project here. You can see it. We're gonna come back and this is going to update super quick. So if we go to Franklin AI, we can actually see our project now. So we have our project selected. We can upload files, folders if we want. We can also say, hey, do we want just a single engineer? So we just have Alex now, or do we want the whole team on this task? So we're gonna have the whole team and we also have this, which is new. So we have race mode. So it's just like a performance boost mode. So it's going to try to go as fast as possible. And we also have a deep research mode, which is going to work similar to the other models where it's going to do a deep research. Lastly, we have some options in terms of which large language models we want to use. So we can use like advanced creation with Claude 4 Sonnet, standard, which is GPT-5, focus more Gemini 2.5 Pro, or there is even more models. So if we wanna go like the cheapest, and if I move myself out of the way, of course, then you can see it. The cheapest is DeepSeek Chat, and then we have Quinn 3 Coder Plus. So we have some options here. Just for the sake of this, we are going to use Claude 4 Sonnet. Let me move myself back over and now we need to create our prompt for our game to be made. So now we have our prompt. I want to create a mechanically focused 2D fighting game engineered for high stakes combat. The core gameplay is built on deep combo system of light and heavy attacks and it continues to go on and on. I have super base here and I said, hey, I want to keep track of every single move. So every single punch, kick, projectile and reckoning performed by the entire global player base, just keep track of all of it. So let's hit submit and let's watch MGX go to work. So very similar to a regular large language model with a canvas feature. On the left, we have our chat. So this is the prompt we just put in and we can see our team leader, Mike, is getting to work. He is working on our game. At the bottom here, we have an editor. We can flip from editor to files and we can kind of see what's going on. And there's like a chat file history that goes back and forth with our team leader and everyone else. And then this is going to fill up with files over time. We can also add new data, add new files, and everything will work. So let's go back to the editor. Because we did a manual override, we can go from like editor to file. We also have some options so up here. We can actually click to see the different people and what their roles are. And it says, hey, this agent has not been assigned to the project yet. So the only one assigned to our project currently is our team lead, Mike, and he's working on it. We can also hit click to follow different agents and we can see exactly what the agents are doing as they go through and make our file. So we can see our team leader, Mike, has made some progress. So we have a comprehensive product requirement document, a PRD, and we can kind of go through a deep combo system, character specific moves, a strategic soul meter, final reckoning, it kind of goes on. And then we move on to Emma. So he, the Mike, the team leader is calling Emma and you can see him go at Emma, work on this. So Emma is now making our plan and we can see phase one and Emma is saying, hey, phase one, the product manager is now creating a detailed PRD. And then Bob is the architect. He's going to design and complete the system architect. And then Alex, the engineer, is going to implement the full fighting game. It feels like Alex is going to be doing a lot of work. So anyway, we can kind of go forward and you can see it in process. So you can actually see it searching the web. It's finding data. This isn't just like a simple large language model, this is like a full-fledged agent and each agent has its own abilities and its own preset prompts to get the most out of each one. So imagine having all these different 
large language models being able to search the web, work together to create your game. So we can continue going through and it says, hey, Emma is now working, our project manager, and she is coming up with all the different numbers. So we can see how much it's gonna forecast to make, and it says, hey, the funny game segment represents a significant portion of the broader funny game industry. So we can kind of keep going down. It's coming up with combat systems and timing. So it's come up with all these different games like Street Fighter, Tekken, Mortal Kombat. And then it says, hey, there's meter systems and mechanics. So again, it's going through each and every one to figure out what the best approach to take is for our fighting game, visual style and atmosphere. It's competitive accessibility. So it's going through all this, product managers coming up with all their statistics, we're just kind of keep going down, and this is happening faster than I can actually scroll through and read. I gave Alex too much credit because definitely Emma is doing a lot of work. We can also click and we can see, okay, Mike is thinking and Emma is thinking, and they're both kind of like working on stuff right now, and the other agents haven't been called yet. So you can actually see here, Emma, as the product manager, we can see the terminal. So we can see exactly what Emma has and we can talk to her through the terminal. We can also see the editor and this is what Emma is working on right now as we speak. So this is just Emma coming up with her plan and we can select through and we can see, okay, what did Mike come up with? And this is Mike coming up with his plan. So we can actually see what each individual agent has done as they do it. We now have Bob, the architect on the case. So you can see here, he's reading the documentation to understand he's creating a comprehensive design system for our other agents to work with. So we can click it, we can hide it, we can just kind of see what he's doing. It is just working through creating our game. What I find really interesting is the fact that it makes really detailed plans. So this one here is a product requirement document. We kind of talked about this. You can see it, it goes through every aspect. It comes up with like even these charts saying, okay, this is what we need to be successful. So the competitive excellence versus the niche products, mass market appeal, it goes through everything. It makes this really detailed document even before it starts to code. And then it comes up with all the different phases. And for every single part of the documentation, it creates these really in-depth things that it has to follow. So for example, we have this chart here and it goes through like game initialized phase, combat architect, execution, it kind of goes through all these different options and things it needs to do in order to code. And this is what really separates it. This is what really makes it different than just straight vibe coding. Cause if you're vibe coding on ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, it doesn't matter. It is just one agent based off whatever you tell it you want. It's not coming up with these really comprehensive in-depth documentation prior it's just doing exactly what you tell it and your results will never be as good at what this thing is about to pull off, what MGX is doing. So now we can see here, you can see the UI folder and you can see the files that it has coded based on our really in-depth documentation. So it took our small idea, it's expanded it out and now we can keep running with it. I'm sure you have noticed that I have run out of my daily free credits. So we can either wait till tomorrow or we can upgrade so we know what's about to happen here. If you like AI, consider subscribing. It's free, it costs you nothing, and I cover AI on a daily basis, and by subscribing, it allows me to buy credits for apps like this so I can show them to you in more in depth. So now we are on the pro plan. We have 10 million credits, which should be enough. And just so you know, you can get 750,000 credits per day. You can see here the chat was interrupted. So we can just hit continue and, and Alex is just going to continue where it left off. As a programmer who's been doing it all my life, manually for the most part, and also someone who's really interested in AI, hence the channel, I wanna show you how you can correct problems that you are going to get. For example, here it says, hey, we have this file here, can you check it? At the bottom, we have some options. So we can hit file, and this is gonna give us our files like I showed you before. We can see app viewer, and this is going to show our actual application. We can see here there is an error. We can also click this button down here. This is gonna give us a mobile view or PC view. We can also hit console to see what console logs we have. So if you ever have any errors like we do here, we can do one of a few things. We can just copy this over and we can just copy this here, maybe a little bit of that. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna come on the left and we're gonna just paste it in, hit enter and it will fix. Alternatively, you can also tell your app while you're just vibe coding, you can say, hey, can you add some console logs? So if you're getting things that work and you're not getting an error message like this, but your app is actually showing you something, you can say, hey, can you add console logs? And then you can go down to the app viewer, open up the console, and it's going to have text for you that you can add, or you can view actually, you can copy the 
text out of the console log, go back, paste it on the left, and then say, hey, this is what I'm getting. Can you see? Can you fix this for me? So I just want to show you what an error looked like and how you can go about correcting it. So now let's look at our game for the first time together. We can see here we have some nice tabs. We can see live global tracking. So we can see like global warfare. I guess that's gonna show just different stats. We have community events apparently. So we can unlock golden warrior skins if the community hits 1 million global carnage challenge. So because we're actually tracking all this global stats, we can actually do fun stuff like that. And as we scroll down, you can see like the master of the combat, master controls and everything else. So truthfully, this isn't fully hooked up to Superbase yet, but we can just go back and forth. We can prompt and we can say, hey, make sure it's hooked up with Superbase. So let's pick our fighter, let's pick the warrior. We can see all the different master of the art combat. It doesn't look great in terms of like UI, but again, we can just go back and forth, prompt this back and forth and make this look good. So here we go, let's figure out our movement, WSAD, light attack, JK, UI for our heavy attacks and soul powers is L123. Okay, let's do it. All right, so we can do our attacks. And again, this is just like a single prompt. We can jump and you can see how it's looking. It's not bad. We can see our heavy attacks and what is popping up on the right? Oh, we won, yay, victory. All right, so we can see our final health, 56. The enemy's final health is zero, and we can hit fight again. And again, all right, let's try my special move. Oh, wow, look at the special move. You see how much damage that takes off? Just one simple prompt, all the different agents went back and forth and made us this game, which is pretty wild. I wanna show you a couple of features now. So in the top right, you can see update. And if you don't see update, it will say publish. It's because I already clicked publish. So we can click that and you're going to get something like this. So we can actually see a link. And if we click edit, it's gonna bring up the settings page and we can actually edit the connected domains that we have to our single app. We can see global control. So we can see exactly, hey, what model are we gonna use continuously talking to this? So if you wanna change it at any point in time, you can do that. You can see like a credit reminder, you can say, hey can you give us a reminder of how much credits we have remaining we can even choose a preference so if we want it dark we can do that as well we can see integrations plan billing so on and so forth but let me go back to update for a second you can actually see which version you want to publish so if you've been vibe coding a lot you can actually click this drop down and you can see all the different versions you have and you can say hey this is the version i want public not the latest version which i'm still working on which is a really cool feature because now you have the ability to keep iterating without having a broken version as the public version for everyone to see. There's also the share button in the top right. So now we can edit the app card and this is what people are gonna see when you share the link. So we can have the version screenshot. We can even put up a custom cover. We can upload that, maybe we wanna use that. We can give it a name, a description. We can say, hey, always use the latest and we can hit save and post. We're gonna come back to the homepage of MGX. We're gonna go in the top left and there's something called go to app world here. So now we can actually see all the different apps people have created. If we go on the right side here, there's something called feature let's go to latest and let's see our app and wow there's a lot being published just now just now just now but here is our game here that you can see we have three views and one thumbs up already so you can actually go through and you can see different things people have made and you can see the quality that you can make just by going back and forth and prompting with all the different agents so the first game i want to show you is this classic retro pinball game so you can see how it's loading you can see the lines it looks kind of retro but but the coolest part is when you go to character selection. So we're gonna hit play, and this was built with Flutter and Firebase. There's a remix option. We can even open up in chat, and we can just start building on top of this. But check this out. We pick our different characters, and the entire background just kind of changes. So we can go from Sparky to Dash to Android. So let's select Android, and we have our controls here, and it gives us some tips. So we can hit the ball back, and I didn't do it enough, so it has good physics. So let's do it again. And here comes our ball, and we're going to hit it up. Well, okay, listen, I'm going to do it really, really all the way back this time. Boom, let's go, ball. It's pinball time. So now we can hit the flippers, and check this out. We're playing pinball. This looks really good. Here we have an Amazon clone, so they used MGX to just make a clone of Amazon, which looks good. And we can select different pages, and you can see how it looks. We can see the individual products. Pretty cool. 
We also have some pretty cool landing pages like this that you can see that look really professional and good. And again, if you like any of this, you can thumbs it up. You can click the link, you can share it. We can remix it. So if we hit remix, it's gonna say, hey, let's make it with your project name. We click remix and boom, it is remixing the chat. We now have the ability to modify and edit this application that someone else created, shared, and now we can just build on top. And this screen should look familiar because it's the one we were using before. So you can see everything like we had before. We can go back and forth with all our different agents. So we have Mike at charge and he can make it all happen for us. We also have this very original idea, which is a block stacking application. And you can see how this looks and we can select our block color. And again, this was just made just pure vibe coding with all the different agents. I think MGX is an extremely powerful tool and amazing for vibe coding just because it works so different than anything else I've tested. The fact that you can integrate with the database so you can actually have it work right out of the box, which is really cool. The fact that you can have all these different agents with different personalities and you have like a team lead that is talking to the others they're making a very in-depth game plan and they're saying hey go through all this make sure it works and even still after all that you have such simple controls on how you can make it update for any errors along the way and if you guys enjoy ai don't forget to subscribe i cover ai on a daily basis don't forget to like the video it tells the algorithm hey i enjoy this type of content i want to see more of it leave a comment down below let me know what your thoughts are on this one I'd love to know what you think. If you're into vibe coding, drop a comment down below. What tool are you using currently? And is this something you would try? Honestly, just for free, you get some credits every single day. So it won't hurt. Just sign up for free, give it a try. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. How will this work for you? Love to hear it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video.